Clark Schmidt. Clark, 2020 was a big year for you in terms of baseball. What do you take away from that season? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I definitely learned a lot. It was definitely, uh, obviously, it was an unprecedented season with uh, all the extenuating circumstances with the COVID and all that stuff. But um, to be able to make it out the other end, have a healthy year, uh, front to back, get all my outings in, whether it was at the alternate site or up in the big leagues, it was, it was a really good year. I, I took a lot away from it. I learned a ton. Uh, whether that was being around the guys or, or just working on my craft, uh, I felt like I, I made a lot of a lot of really good strides, and, and I'm really happy with where things were at. What were some of those strides, and what areas did you feel like you grew this season? Um, well, you know, working down in the alternate site, uh, it was uh, it was really a lot of development. You know, I mean, working with Sam Breen and Desi, uh, our pitching guy directors, being with them day in and day out, uh, having them watch all my throwing sessions, all my, you know, bullpens and games or whatever it may be. It was way more hands-on. Um, so you, I got a lot of development that you typically wouldn't get in a year. Um, you could work on things, whether that was pitch development. For me, I was working on my four-seam profile. Uh, I wanted to add a little bit more ride to my four-seam to, to complement my two-seam uh, and just continue to refine the command on my fastball. And, and being able to work down that on the alternate site was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I felt like I made a lot of strides in, in those areas. And there's obviously some things I continue to work on, and those are the things that I'm working on right now. Uh, just continue to clean the arm path up and continue to being able to re repeat my mechanics late in the games are, are the big things that I'm working on right now and just continuing to, to be a strike thrower and also just attack the zone and not kind, kind of not be afraid to, to nibble around the corners. You talked about trying to get some more ride on that four-seamer. How do you go about doing so? What do they identify to help you get to that next step? Yeah, so there's a lot that goes into it. I think that uh, with the way analytics are in baseball now, the way Edgertronics, Rapsodos, uh, slow motion cameras, all the stuff that we use, Trackmans, um, I think that the pitch development is at a place where it's never been before. I think that uh, if you really spend some time and really put focus on a, a certain pitch or whatever you, whatever area you're trying to work on, you can really make a lot of improvement and a lot of gain a lot of ground. For me, um, it was kind of uh, a lot of finger position and a lot of like uh, finger pressure on certain points of the baseball. Um, so being able to work on the edgertronic as uh, multiple times a week, being able to be on the rap soda with these guys, they're so good at what they do. Um, and I made a lot of really, really good strides with it. And, and I think by the end of the year, it was, it was almost like a completely different four scene than what it was in the beginning of the year. So I was really, really happy with where I'm at with that right now. Is all the information ever too much where you're constantly diving in and you're starting to think too much when you're on the mound? Yeah, it definitely can be too much. That's that's where I like, kind of fall back on what I said earlier. I think that uh, in a typical season, uh, when you're in, uh, this year being at the alternate site, you don't really have to worry about you know results as much as you would in a normal season. So I could really, really focus and hone in on what I want my profile and my pitches to look like and what I want my mechanics to do and what I'm trying to do with the baseball rather than just being like, okay, I really need to strike this guy out or get it out here. Um, so that's where I think I'm, I gained a lot of ground in the alternate site. Um, and I think, but in a normal season, it can definitely be a rabbit hole where you kind of pay a little bit too much attention to it and then you kind of nitpick and then you kind of get that ball rolling down the hill and it's kind of hard to bounce back from. So you kind of you got to stay yourself from, from getting in those too deep of holes, but it's good to, to work on things, especially now during this time during the off season. I think I'm, I put more work in than I've ever put in during this off season. I feel better than I've ever felt. So it's, it's one of those things where I'm trying to keep this work in, continue to feel good and, and kind of keep these weeks going uh, consistently where I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. How do you manage how much you train and how much you throw in this off season, considering everything that went on in 2020 and not really necessarily having clarity as far as what's going to happen in 2021? Yeah, I think that's, that's probably the biggest question and the hardest thing to gauge. I think that uh, a lot of the big saying last year was uh, I'd rather be overprepared than underprepared. And I think that that still kind of reigns true today, but in the same sense, you're trying to, you don't want to overdo it a little bit too much. And there's times where you kind of back off and kind of have a feel for things. Um, but it's tough. I think nobody, nobody really knows when season's going to get started. I think nobody knows if the spring training is going to get pushed back or not. We all hope that it's all going to start on time and the kind of the world goes back to normal. Um, so I'm, I'm preparing as if it is. So I'm preparing as if we're going to have spring training normal time in February. And, um, and hopefully that, that works out. So for me, I'm just going to continue to put the work that I'm putting in and then let, her, let those chips fall where they fall and, and just know that I'm going to be extremely over-prepared and ready to go when spring training, to start, or spring training starts. Has your confidence reached a new level considering the fact that you did get some reps in the majors last year? You talked about some of the progress with some of your pitches as well. Uh, yeah, I think it's, if you look at my results last year, I, uh, I didn't do what I wanted to do. I didn't have a very good year results wise. And, 
Uh, I think typically maybe you would talk to somebody and they would say that would kind of hurt their confidence. For me, I think it, uh, it put my confidence at, I know that I can get these guys out. So I, it's not like nothing took a, a knock on it at all. I think that uh, I learned so much from last year, whether it was a short amount of time and in, in innings and small sample size, but I learned a lot. Um, and I probably would say it, it motivated me even more. So I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm kind of hungrier than ever to get back out there next spring and, and kind of show that these guys that I can compete and help this team win a world series. And, um, and I'm excited just to come into spring training, fighting for a rotation spot. That's something that, that means a lot to me. I think last year there was kind of some extenuating circumstances with the roster size and limitations and stuff like that. And me not being on the roster. Uh, and this year that's not the case. So I'm hungry and, and I'm ready to go. And like you said, my, I mean, my confidence is higher than ever just because of the work that I'm putting in the preparation. I think for me, the confidence lies in, in the preparation that I'm putting in and, and I've never put this much in before. Um, so yes, I'm very confident.